Hey everybody, before you watch the video, I just want to go ahead and apologize now for not being able to see Sam on the TV. You know, this is our first time. I gave it a test run before he came on and it looked good, but for some reason, when he was on, you can't really see him for the glare from my lighting, I'm guessing, but um, at least you could hear everything he's had to say. And at the end of the video, we said something about a calculator and Curtis Terry. Well, it wasn't Curtis Terry, it was Tyreek Reed. So, but um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Jeremy is actually gonna upload it on his channel. So if you see it, if you're seeing this on his channel, please give it a thumbs up and share it. You know, this is something, you know, first time we've done this. So if you like it, please let us know. And if there's something that we could do better, please let us know. We're always open to hear what you guys have to say. And again, I want to say thank you again to Sam Huff for coming on and having a, having fun with us, you know. So, thank you guys. Is everybody ready? Uh, we're ready. Okay. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ready Balls Podcast. Today we have a very special interview edition. I'm your host, Ethan Benfield, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Alan and, wow, Jennifer, you look different. Well, <clears throat> you know, that coronavirus will really mess with you. Waka waka. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hi, I'm I'm Jeremy Lell from the uh, Conrad's Cowbells uh, podcast. Uh, here to help. What out a tonight. topical reference that won't make sense in literally like <laughs> two months. Eh, we're current. Yeah. So we go back and watch this. What was the coronavirus? How many did he drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally like a good blue moon instead, but you know. It's whatever. But we don't drink beer. We drink cider. Yes, that's right. We drink Bold Rock, hard All apple right. cider, brewed in Mills River. Mills Creek? Was I right the first River. time? Mills River, North Carolina. No danger of getting the coronavirus if you don't drink Corona and you drink Bold Rock instead. That's right. There is no Bold Rock virus, and if there that's is, right. it just makes you want another Bold Rock. Anyway, who are we here to interview today? Um... ML, MLB's top prospect number 74. 74. 74 out of 100 in the entirety of minor, of minor league, league baseball. Um, one of my favorite players I've ever got to see in person. Uh, he hit, you know, who, what's his name? Sam Huff. Sam Huff. He's the stuff. Sam Huff. And he hit 15 home runs in one month. One month. One month, 15 home runs. That, that is an average of a home run every other game. And, you know, usually that's a lot of times two in the same game. Yeah. A lot of players don't even get 15 in a year. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's even, Especially minor league. Yeah. I, and I don't care what level. And it, 15 in a month? Holy cow. Boy, did that break me. Because I am <laughs> a poor college student. And as you remember on this show, I promised to donate $5 to Red for every home run hit, and so far I've only made 13 out of those 15 donations in literally an entire year. But don't worry, those last two are coming. Stay tuned a couple more weeks from now for more news on Red, by the way. I'll believe that when I see it. Exactly. When, yeah. When Gloria shows me the PayPal transactions, I'll, I'll know if you did or not. Anyway, we're here to talk about Sam Huff. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's go with a little bit more in depth about, but not too much because we still got you know gotta save some for the interview. We got we got to talk to him, so you know. But what are we gonna say to set up the interview? It's a very important part of any interview. What are we gonna say? I don't know. I'm gonna tell him hi. I'm gonna say hi too, but I'm talking about hi. some important stats that our viewers out there and listeners. Oh wait, no, just viewers. Still no audio. Can know. I was gonna do audio, but I didn't have the other phone charged. Okay, well. Um, well, like the fact that he's pretty tall for a catcher. Yeah, six he's four. Six four, but uh, yeah, that's not it's not completely unheard of for there to be a catcher that tall. I mean, we had Sandy Alomar was six five. You know, uh, AJ Przinsky also six four. Uh, Piazza, Brian McCann, and Carlton Fisk, three of the greatest catchers in baseball. We're all, we're six three. Ah, oh, you so, just admitted and, that Brian McCann was great. My dad's I hate me. I hate Brian McCann because <laughs> he runs his mouth to people who hit home runs, and he thinks they celebrate a little too much. 
Well, if you don't want them to hit home runs off of you, Brian, call a different pitch. Also, can fit in there Anthony Seagler. Yeah, at Brian McCann Jr. Whoa. That's Anthony Seagler. Back to Sam, Allen. <laughs> Anything you would like to contribute to this? He's the stuff. He is. <laughs> Sam, uh, he's the stuff. Yeah, we figured, you know, this year, I've been wanting to do interviews since we started this podcast two years ago, but it was just, you know, conflicting schedules and stuff with the players and us. But I It figured, is so hard to get an interview put together. Not really, because we never really tried. But I figured, you know, what the hell, third third time's a charm. So, you know, our third season, go big or go home on the first one, and let's knock it out of the park with a grand slam with, by Sam Huff. So That's right. So, without um, further ado, oh, no. What? You got more? Well, I'm just saying, I I messaged him on Instagram and, you know, told him, hey, would you come on? And he took him a couple days to answer the message, but, you know, he he gladly said yes. And I am super happy that he did. So we'll see where it goes. And I would just like to say that this interview brought to you in part by Moose Candle Company. Yes. Go check them out. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Smells like leather. Jose Trevino's favorite candles. Yeah. We don't speak for him. We don't know if he really. Well, he's shaking that, his head. Yeah. Hey, Jose, do you like do you like the candles? He's, he's little Jose Trevino's C. favorite candles anyway. See, he said see. All right. <laughs> so, without further ado, here's the interview. Here we go. What's up, guys? Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, Sam. Sam. Hey, Sam. There's the man. There's the stuff. <laughs> How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. Great, doing great man. How are you doing? I'm doing. I just finished a little death appointment. Now head home. Hope you're not. Uh, hope you didn't just get like a filling or something. And we're, uh, you know, hope you're not getting that. No. That, doing. Luck, luckily, luckily, the dad said I wasn't eating too many sweets and stuff, so I was good. All right. Well, good. it's better than what I can say. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to finally have you on the show. Oh yeah! Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, the first interview we've oh. ever had. First oh, ever. Lord, I'm, I feel honored. <laughs> well, trust me, trust me, we feel more honored. Definitely. <laughs> this is gonna gonna help us more than it'll ever help you. And we brought your friend Jose Trevino. I don't know if you can. He's right here. He, not great in the picture, but it, we thought um, he'd be great to have. Him. I miss him. I miss him already. I wish he was here. Well, he's here in spirit and in bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> well so what have you been up to this all season you know just just trying to get back to what i was at last year getting big and strong working on everything catching hitting like just the little things that i need to do you know i'm not polished or perfect so i'm gonna try and do my best to work on everything cool dude but, you getting ready for uh, spring yeah. training? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, get the big league invite, get to do what I need to do up there. Kind of excited to see what I need to do and to just pick everyone's brains, just kind of go in there with an open mind. So were you surprised when you got the invite or were you kind of expecting it? I mean, I was ex- I was excited. I was kind of just kind of hoping I'd get the call, but you know, if I didn't get the call, I wasn't gonna get mad or discouraged. I was just gonna like do my thing, and you know, whatever happens, happens. And Pagan called me and shout and uh, told me, and I was very excited. And I thanked everyone and called my dad and my girlfriend and everybody in my family, and they're really excited too. Yeah, that's that's really awesome, man. I, I know we're all excited for you. And uh, yeah, I it was, it, Alan has some extremely burning questions that we've been wondering about for a quite a long time. Well, Jeremy asked you this. Shoot, ben. Uh, I'm here. Jeremy asked you this question, Winston Salem, right after the All Star game. Um, growing up, when I was a kid, you know, when I was outside of playing baseball, I'd always turn my hat backwards, be like that guy, Ken Griffey <laughs> Jr. The kid. You know, we seeing saw you next you to him on TV. That, that that was like, oh, my God, I know that guy who's standing next to the guy. So, you know, what was your experience like with, with Junior? Being on TV next to a legend. 
Well, so that was that was the crazy thing. I was finishing like my second out of BP, and Harold Reynolds says something like, "Sam, come here, come here." And I, I look up, and he's like, "Kid, kid," and he uh, he me, and he uh, says, he says like, "Hey, Ken, I need, I want you to meet Sam Huff." And I looked up, and it was Ken Griffey Jr. And I was like, "Oh my gosh." That's Ken Griffey Jr. there, and I kind of was kind of stood there and looked at uh, Ken, and he looked at me and started laughing, and he <laughs> he said, "Man, you got that old school power." And I looked at him, I was like, "Yeah, whatever you say, bro. You're Ken Griffey Jr. Like, oh my gosh!" Wow. And I kind of just I just shook his hand and I went back and did my stuff, and it was cool talking during the game. He know it was probably every kid's little, like, every kid's dream just to meet that guy and just kind of understand what he did to be the player he was. Right. Yeah, that, well, that, that's, like, it's a kid's dream, it's an old man dream. You yeah. Because, I mean, if I could ever meet that guy, that was awesome. Speaking of that raw power, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a sense of how famous you really were during that game, the uh, the Futures game. We were recording an episode of the show while that game was going on, and when I got home... I opened the door, and the first thing my mom said, who's been to one Crawdads game in the last two years, was, oh, my gosh, Ethan, Sam Hunt was on TV, and he had a home run. <laughs> so somebody that barely goes to any minor league games knew you and was happy, just as happy as we were, to, uh, yeah. to see that happen. Just to say, these guys were making a show, not watching the game. I was at home <laughs> watching you on TV. I wasn't going to miss that for the world. They're not true fans, oh, man. Oh, we, had to, we, we had to make the show for our one fan that watches the show. So anyway. We mentioned it during the show. So my phone went uh, off, and I, I updated it right then and there. So. That's awesome. But, um, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was uh, that experience, that, that whole opportunity to do that, it was something that not a lot of guys get to do. And uh, me especially, I was just going in there thankful just to be there personally. But, uh, Expecting myself to hit the game, the game tying home run was kind of a, it was a surreal moment. I kind of took it in. I Jim told me, I mean everyone in that yeah. dugout, King Griffey Jr. They all called the home run. I mean they were, Sam, I got feeling you're gonna go yard this game, and I was like, oh whatever you say, bro. Like I'm just trying to hit a home. I'm just trying to get a hit. Did you? And then the next thing you know. Ne next thing you know, I got everyone smacking my back, saying, I told you, I told you so, and. It was just awesome experience, and it was probably—I get goosebumps every time I think about it. it was It was amazing. Did it feel yeah. any different knowing the game was televised, or was it just business as usual? It was business as usual. I didn't really—I was more worried about playing first base than anything because I didn't play first base the whole time this season. And the one day I played first base, I'm playing at a playing at the Futures game, and I've never practiced or done any ground balls. They said, hey, you're at first base. So I was like, okay, I'm at first base. Wow. I have uh, one question. Uh, what uh, what happened to the bat that you hit it with afterwards? Uh, so, I yeah, so baseball, um, like memorabilia or whatever, they they asked me, hey, could we take your bat for the Baseball Hall of Fame? And I looked at it, I was like, okay, good joke. Like, that's a funny joke. My bat's going to the Hall of Fame. And he was like, no, like, we want your bat for the Hall of Fame. Could you donate it? And I looked at him, and the first thing that came to my head was, well, I, I barely have any bats. I need bats. And he looked at me, and he's like, well, we're just, we're just going to take it for trophy. And I was like, I was like, dude, you don't understand. Like, I, these are the only bats I have right now in my bag. I cannot give them up. And so he negotiated with me and said, hey, we're, we're going to, can you please give us the bat? And I was like, okay, I'll give you the bat. And I gave the bat away, and he said, anytime I want to go to Cooperstown and check out the, the area, just let me know, and I'm in, I can get in, just check out the place for no charge and just kind of, like, see what it's about. Wow, that's cool. that is, that's awesome. I mean, did you ever think in a million years your bat would be in Hall of Fame? No, I, I looked at my dad after the game, and he was like, where's your bats? And I was like, oh, some dude took it. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, he was like, he said he was at the Baseball Hall of Fame or something. And my dad looked at me, he's like, you're back in the Hall of Fame? And I was like, yeah, apparently. And he's like, okay. Oh, wow. That's nothing you hear every day. 
best believe if I ever make it up there to Cooperstown, that's going to be one of the pitchers Definitely. that I'm going to be taking. And like, that's the bet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, the, the, the bat new, the, the tar is new. Like I have like maybe a three rounds of BP with it. It looks like a brand new bat. Like I'm, I'm surprised that they took it. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, not to brag, but I have two bats from Matt Watley. So. so how about that? <laughs> Maybe Cooperstown is going to want those one day. I have his bet. Okay, well, I Alan's have, got a... <laughs> I have his autograph. Alan's got a question about uh, cards. Very yeah. important question. You know, you, I mean, you know that I collect baseball cards and we're in a bunch of groups. So how does it feel, because I know you have the Leaf Metal cards. I saw those on eBay the other day, but to come out with the Bowman cards, you did that... You know, they say Bowman is your first official card. So, how does it feel to have your yeah. own baseball card? You might be having some difficulty. Can you, can you hear me now? It was weird because when I first got drafted, I was my whole life I wanted my own my own card. Right. Did you? Did you Hold did on. You yeah, I can. Cards? I can hear you guys. I'm going through a rough spot right now. That's all good. Um, no, so that that's a that was a weird thing. So, so I uh I got told like oh, I have a card deal coming. I was like okay, I've been waiting for one for like four years now. I've been wanting one, been hoping, praying, and I get the box and it's three thousand cards. The first I have to sign like seven thousand cards wow. for overall, and I got three thousand for first batch. And the first batch had like the print cards in it, so I. I looked at them, and I, I kind of looked at my dad. I was like, how much do these uh, metal ones go for? Like, aren't these, like, pretty special? And then like, he was like, yeah, that's what they made them with. And I was like, okay. And so, I, I mean, it was probably something I've always wanted to do in my whole – I mean, everybody wants their own baseball card and with Tops and Bowman and their first, like, official card. And it's signing them, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It makes me feel it just – like, I've always wanted to do that my whole life as a kid, sign baseball cards for, you know, people to have and just kind of overall do what I need to do. And, like, I love signing baseball stuff overall. I'll, I'll sign. I'll do anything. But, mm -hmm. man, signing your own, your own baseball card, your first baseball card, is probably a pretty cool moment for me. I, I, I loved it, actually. Cool. I, I'm definitely going to be getting me one. Uh, hopefully I can afford it. Because I'm, yeah. they're they're going to they're, they're going to be expensive. I can already yeah, let you know uh -huh. that one. They are. Um, Josh Jones, his is up there, and I'm like, yeah, I'll just get it in my, in person. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's it's, so, it's hard. It's it's hard. I don't know how they do, they sell it. I don't know where they sell it or anything, but it's cool. I mean, seeing like I know I collected Luis Gonzalez. I collected Mike Piazza. I've had Buster Posey. I've had all these cards, and, like, it, just to have your own card, it's something that, I mean, even me, I still collect cards to this day. I try to get guys autographs that I've looked up to since I was a little kid that are still in the big leagues Sweet. and doing their job. So it's it's cool to, as a 22-year-old man, like, getting signatures still, it's, it's different, but I, I love it because it's something I've always wanted to do as a kid. Well, if you ever get a chance, there's this guy named Mike Trout. You know, if you want to hook a guy up with an autograph, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, if you've ever heard of him or yeah, not. I don't know, you know. Yeah, he plays for a team called got, uh, the, the Angels Angels, right? Yeah. That's a yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. So I got to talk to Scott Heineman. Scott Heineman boys with him, so I'm actually going to reach out to Heine and ask him if I can get a signature and see what I can do. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that great. Awesome. That's great. How long does it take to sign all those? Yeah. Not to snub down. Um, I know it was one of his big ones. It, so I get like there's two there's strips of like maybe three hundred cards in a box those little boxes so I have to sign I sign two of those strips in like two hours if I'm really focused if I'm like kind of lackadaisy it takes me like five hours because it gets really your hand cramps and like it's just hard to like keep going so sometimes I just like I have to put it down and relax but my girlfriend Katie she's like helps me like she passes them out and I just sign them so I, when I get into a groove it's a lot easier. Now, there has to be someone there physically watching you sign them, right? Yes, sir. It's a uh, it's a whole ordeal. I didn't think uh, like it was like that. They come watch you. They make sure. And I mean, I respect it. They're they're giving you a bunch of cards. They want you to sign. So it's but it, it's fun. It, it's part of the thing. It 
it brings out like the how happy you are and it makes you feel like okay like this is awesome like i've never expected i thought i'd ever do this in my life so it's, it's kind of cool and this was a, this has been brought up in one of the baseball card groups that i'm in do you get paid for signing those cards or is it just a you know here's a bunch of cards we sign them and someone can make money yeah they, they they pay me and like i i mean to be honest at this point i just I like signing cards. Like that was my whole dream. I, in high school, I, I would. So. You're good. In high school, I would. In high school, I would sign little sheets and like on my paper for fun instead of doing homework, which <laughs> no one should not do this. But yeah, I'd always off. just practice my. I practice my signature on my paper. So I mean, probably don't do it as a young kid like me. But I always like doing it. So I didn't care. <laughs> Oh, uh, what's that autograph that I have? This nice. Who is it? Tyree. Yeah, Tyree. Yeah, oh, I think Tyree he, Thompson. I think he does the same thing still to this day. Is practice his because that's the the most beautiful autograph I've ever seen. Yeah, say so I got his autograph just to see how pretty it was. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, and yeah, even something as small as a ball or as those little commemorative bats that you know stadiums have. He will still write out in perfect cursive his name, like his entire name. A lot of a lot of autographs are just like initials or something like that. He really writes out his whole name. Yeah, I I try to when I sign, I try and make it legible because I hate it. I remember. Well, I, I think I got. Yeah, and the ball that I have that you signed at home is is perfectly. It's it's my favorite piece of baseball memorabilia just because it's so. It's like okay, I know this is Sam. Like, I have stuff that. Uh, from Crawdads games, like I have a Crawdads hat that I bought in like 2014 that's covered in signatures, and I can maybe tell you who three of them are, <laughs> but I know that the ball that you signed was from you. I do have one of your autographs yeah. that is not legible though, but that's not your fault. That was my fault because I gave you. No, it. Well, I, I can't you... blame it on you. It was it was but, it was on the spur on the spur of the moment. I was just rushing. I felt like well, I felt horrible. But no, what? But the awesome. the part that is my my fault is it's a picture of you in black catcher's gear, and I handed you a black sharpie to sign the card. Oh. <laughs> well, Sam, one thing I hope you remember is how much money that you cost me last season with those red donations. Hey, everyone was telling me you wanted you wanted to do this little game where I hit home runs, so I was like, why it goes to a good cause? So I got to do it, yeah, you know. It was it was a great cause, and I swear one game you hit. Two home runs in the same game, and on the second home run, as you were rounding third, you did like a little money symbol at me or something. <laughs> I remember that. I think it was a good I pointed right at you. I, I pointed right at you when I was running in the dugout too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's one thing that we like to talk. We, you know, we make all these jokes like the red donations and signatures and stuff like that. We always think it's incredible when a player like you, who's been on TV, who's talked to famous pro baseball players and is probably going to be in Major League Baseball with that deal. Will be. Will be. Yeah. And, like, that you still remember people from Hickory and people from, you know, Down East or Spokane or, like, people that not all players remember the little guys or the fans, and I feel like you do, yeah, and, that's, that. and that's something that we really appreciate. Yeah, I mean, as a player, you guys might find this kind of interesting at this, but I was never really the looked at kid. I was always, you know, I did the job. I got my job done. I always batted very well. I hit for high average. I hit for power, but I never, like, was the that breakout player. I never was talked about. So I always was humbled, and I try my best to this day, even after the Futures game, trying to stay humble and going to big league camp. I mean, I don't want to get a big head, so I try and just remember where I'm coming from. And as a person, I'm just a kid from Arizona. Like, that's how I always base myself off as. And people think, like, oh, he's he's been in the Futures game or he's got this big league invite like, all this stuff, all the incentives. And, I mean, I'm just, if you meet me, I'm a really nice guy. I'm not going to, like, big league you. I'm not going to do any of that. I try to be as nice as possible because when I was a kid, my parents said, treat people how you want to be treated. And that's how I always... I grew up, and that's how I am to this day. Well, it shows. It shows, yeah. It shows. Uh, one question that I have is I kind of borrow from, from other interviewers. Uh, when you go to a team for the first time, like when you went from the Crawdads or to the Crawdads even, but when you went up to uh, 
down east and you know when you go up to Frisco or wherever you go to next what's the one thing that you want the the people in that city the the fans your your teammates that you haven't met before what's the one thing that you would want them to know about Sam Huff that I mean I might look scary on the outside but on the inside I'm actually a really nice guy that just wants to play baseball and that's my dream and I don't really want to ever do anything else but play baseball, hopefully for the rest of my life. And then after that, it's just watching baseball. So, I mean, I'm, I want people to know I play hard. I'm nice. I, I give it my all. I give my team what I need. And if it ever comes down to something, I'm going to show them that I'm there for them or I back them up. Or if it comes from, like, if they're having family problems too, like, you need money or, like, if anything, like, I'm always there for everyone. I'm trying to be that guy that's, going to be here for you at your lowest times and then at your highest times. Awesome. Um, my question, we debate about this all the time, between 108 and 115. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Being we're the gonna, catcher. We're going to open this can. Oh, up. we're going to open this up. Oh, this is... You being a catcher and also, you know, uh, when you get up to bat, the ball four chant. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the ball four chant? Okay, first, before you answer that, you know the ball five chant, right? The way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, this, it's like in, in, I think it was Texas and m they did the, yeah, the I don't know who they're playing, they but he, he threw four in a row, and he got up to like 16 or 17 balls, yeah. and he finally threw a strike, and they all started cheering. And I mean, to, to an extent, it works, but if you got a um, professional big league pitcher, like a minor league pitcher that's pretty well known, and doesn't get riled hard enough or get riled as much, then it's it's I could see it. But if it's like a guy that's like been everywhere, he's you know he's rattled out. I bring it out and see what he has to do. And if he starts getting aggravated, which I mean a lot of young pitchers sometimes do, unless they're very like they're very into what they do and they understand what they need to do in situations. But I think it's funny because. You'll hear players like, why do they do that? Why do they do that? <laughs> I just tell them, you know, it's part of the game. Get used to it. It's, it's so part of it. So how do you, and being, I've always wanted to ask a player this, and I never have. How do the other players, you know, your teammates or even the opposing team, how much attention do they pay to Chris's chants or the cowbells or hecklers or stuff like that that goes on in the crowd? They actually, a lot, I get to first base and after you guys chant for me or somebody, they, they're like, do they ever stop? And I was like, no, they go every, they go every day. And they're like, oh my gosh, how do you guys do it? And I was like, I'm used to it, so I don't know about you. And he's like, dude, I can't stop. Like, they won't shut up. And I, I look at him like, I'm like, you guys got to like kind of block it out. You got to make it look like you're not looking at them or something. He's like, dude, I can't. Every time they do it. They count how many steps up back to the like yes. the dugout or some. They they get told they just look at you the whole time. So it's it works. Like hitters that are good hitters that hate failing and everyone fails in this game. It mm -hmm. it rattles guys pretty easy. That's good to know. That is yeah. great to know. That, that that's not just for our benefit. <laughs> that is that is awesome to know. <laughs> Yeah, because I've got a lot of people that have never been to baseball games, and I keep trying to say, come on, come on, come on. I don't want to sit there and watch it. I don't like it. It's boring. I'm like, you are 100% correct. Because I hate watching it on TV unless I know you or somebody else, unless I know them. I can't watch any, you know, a, a Met game because you know, I don't know those people. Well, but, not um, many people can watch Met. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. But, um, so I tell them, I said, you've got to come to Hickory. I said, we do total – Things totally different, you know. Mm -hmm. We we are one hundred percent entertainment yeah. on the field and also in the stands. So, I mean, what other single A team has two separate fan groups? I don't know. Toastman, <laughs> prop mate, but that's only one. Yeah. That's see, like I love I love the energy from the field, like you guys brought in. I don't remember a, a team maybe doing that as good as that. I mean, I know teams like. You go to, like, Greenville or something, and you got, like, a bunch of college students that are just drunk. Like, that's yeah. the thing. But, I mean, yeah, overall, yeah. I don't know of a, a steady fan base that is brought in by people. Like, like, like you guys go every day. Like, you, even if it's raining or if it's 
too cold or too hot in a day game. You guys are always there. Oh, yeah, there was that one game that was like 14 innings and with a two-hour rain delay, and there was like six people left at the end, and it was all people from 108 and 115. Yeah. It was a it was Augusta. We played Augusta, and Martin Perez was making his like rehab start. I remember that game. And we didn't clear. we we didn't start playing until like I don't know. It was ten o'clock, and we didn't get done by one or two. Like that. Yeah, we are. That was a great game. That's that's one of the memories I'm going to remember about you playing here in Hickory because you know Josh was my player that we took care of, and that's when Jess was here, and you were going around the <laughs> the, the the apartment saying you know. I didn't even have to work. I just put my glove up and Martin just threw it right there. I didn't have to move. And he was like, Tell, shut up, Sam. So all, all the pitchers in, in you know, the apartment, just, they were, you know, you got on their nerve with that one. But So that's, that's something I'm never going to forget. So, but, hey, you know, you done your job, he done his job. So Yeah. You know, but, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I, I have, have a question here. Um, yeah, yeah. Who have been your your mentors on this, you know, on your your journey here to achieve your, your dreams? Like coaches, um, maybe other players. Uh, who's helped you out on this this journey? I mean, going from my day one to now, I've probably had a, a lot of coaches talk to me and work with me. And Definitely. I mean. Catching wise, it would be Chris Briones, Manny, and Terrell Thomas working with me, and everyone that's worked with me, Hector in the big leagues, like just all of them working with me, and just kind of like giving their blood and sweat, like what they need me to do, and I give it back. And I mean, Terrell Thomas is probably a definition of a a guy that you and you just look at, he's like, oh, he's going to come to the field every day and he's going to bring something for somebody to get better. Like, it doesn't even matter if it's a pitcher or if it's a position player. He's going to make sure that certain person does his work. I mean, Chase, Jared, JJ, like, um, Josue, like, all these guys. I, I talked to Alex Cobb, Howie Kendrick, Daniel Nava. I've talked to... I mean, you can go to Ken Griffey Jr. I've talked to him, Harold Reynolds. Yeah, I've talked to. As possible. <laughs> I would too. I just, I have a, I have a list of guys that, for sure, do not go unnoticed. Personally, they, everything that people have done for me and what I've tried to do for when they help me, I try and give them my effort and all I can give them, and that's all I can do is I can give them that and. Hopefully they accept it and thank me. If, and if I don't do good, then I didn't do good, and it's just something I didn't pick up. But a lot of people in my life have affected my career, and it's been awesome. I mean, and it goes from fan base. It goes from my family. It goes to my girlfriend. It's everyone that's supported me, it, it, it does. Like, baseball gets long. It gets tiring. It gets – it's emotional. It's, you're not going to – you're not going to – be good 100% of the time, you're going to probably be good 80% of that time, maybe less even, 65, 60, like I'm, I'm going lower than that, maybe it's, this game, you fail a lot, and you got to understand who's, who's there to help you, who's there to like, just support you, and who's just there to like, get you into what you need to become to be, at the end goal, to be a major leaguer. Cool, yeah. Um, a lot of good people. So what's going to be your walk-up song this season? I, I was thinking like, about doing Talk Again. Thank you. I love that. But I hated that song. Oh, yeah, me too. I was like, come I, on, you went from Up Down to that. I couldn't stand I like that a lot better than Up Down. I could not, I could not stand <laughs> Talk. And then like I, halfway through the season, I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to like it I now. I like Talk. And yeah. now it's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> okay. So you, you did it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I offered my girlfriend, Katie, she uh, she was like, no way, you're not doing that again. And I was like, why not? It was a good song. And she she got tired of it. Everyone in Kinston got tired of it. Hickory, they all just got tired of it. Well, so we didn't, we didn't, didn't, we didn't, didn't like it. We didn't like it at first, but then we got to love it, you know, so. Yeah. It's, like it's a, a song personality. that you, it's a song, it's definitely a song you hate at the start, and it's it kind of grows on you, but, I mean, 
listened to that for like a hundred and some games, I would understand why people dislike it. But it, it was funny. I liked it. It was kind of a joke at the end of the year. I thought it was pretty funny. Well, we had to listen to Baby Shark a lot, but that helped. Yeah. That, that, but that, there was reasoning behind that. I'm glad that Baby yeah, Shark there, is dead. <laughs> I, I'm kind of glad that I'm kind of glad that passed over. I wasn't a big fan of that song. It just, I mean, at the start when it came out, it was good, and then it got really boring and tired. So I just started disliking it. It was a funny, silly little thing, like the first two times you heard it, and you're like, okay, enough of that. I don't even think it lasted that long. I let's, still like let's Yanni's get some music. Or something. I still like yeah. Yanni's old music, but I, I, mean, I, I don't know a word of it, but it's just catchy. Yeah. What do you? Yeah, think? It's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm looking around. I mean, a lot of new rappers are coming out. A lot of new music overall is coming out. I'm just kind of seeing what I got. A season's not here yet, so I'm not going to rush into it. I kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm more of the guy that's, it, I feel like songs just come to me. They don't, I don't want to look for something and try and push something up on me that would not fit me, so I'm going to try and just wait and see. Represent North Carolina. Go with some DeBaby. The who? The okay. He's a okay. Rapper. The baby. He gets arrested a lot. Oh, oh so he must be good. Maybe. He gets arrested a lot. Yeah. <laughs> maybe some, maybe some key block or something, something just off the charts of what I would never play on my walk of song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I always, I always like to think like a huge intimidating guy. Like, uh, who's a huge intimidating guy? Sam. Like Chris hey, Davis. Yeah. I was gonna go with somebody else, but I mean, just a huge, imposing, tall guy, and then he, uh, Curtis Terry, comes up, and then you got, uh, wait, did I say the wrong name? I don't know. Did you? What are you talking about? No, I didn't. I said the right name. Anyway, imagine he comes up and he has Have a, another ball drop. You guys looked at me like I said his name wrong, but I didn't, which is which confused me. Anyway, imagine he walks up and then he has just a super tame song like from like Sesame Street or something. He just looks the he looks the pitcher straight in the eye. Like, yeah, deal with it. I'm a huge guy with a kid song. What are you gonna do? That, that, and, that, that was, was the one good thing about Baby Shark. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah. I, I that's actually funny. that I would see when I'd walk up there. I would like on kids' days. Everyone would sing talk, and the, I thought it was funny. And the pitchers after the game would be like, you know, you're you're a fan favorite. Your song, and I was like, yeah, you know, the kids they love it. They, everyone loves it, and they start laughing. It's the song gets like very like if you listen to it a lot and it it'll get to you. But songs like that, like uh, Baby Shark or like Sesame Street or like that kind of thing, like you could even you could even push for like Spice Girls, just switch it up. Like <laughs> I don't know, it's it's something just totally off the charts. That's like why is this your walk up song? <laughs> and you're just like I don't know, it, I just want it. <laughs> I know it, we've listened it, to it. So it fits me. We listen to it every time it comes on in the car. I crank it up because you know it's got the bass and it hits in the car pretty good. And I remember one time it came on and I cranked it up and Lucas was sitting in the back seat. He said, "Nope," and put his headphones in. <laughs> he's he's got tired of it. Like I said, we listen to it every time it comes on the radio. Yeah, I still like that thing. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, I, I liked it at first, but I. I'm sorry, Sam, but you ruined that song for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also ruined it by playing it in between innings. If a, if yeah, a song, that, that, if a song is a walk-up song, you don't have to play it separately during the game also. You That's already why we hear it, it up down like, yeah. so much. You, also, you, you already hear it enough. True. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I got tired of up down last um, year before that. I got tired of it real quick. <laughs> but, um, what are your thoughts about the new ballpark in Ar Arlington? Uh, I went there last week. And it's they say it's ninety percent done, and it's it's awesome. I see the what's what's coming along in there, and it's it's a beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful stadium indoors. Everything's air conditioned. It's turf. It's dirt. It's it's the whole nine. It's it's actually going to be a really cool stadium, and I I want people to come to come watch us play, and I want us, I want us to like give a winning team. Like I feel like we're ready. It's our turn. I feel like we're we're the next step to, to show everyone what Texas baseball is about, and I feel like people are kind of like they're underestimating what Texas baseball is really about. So I'm excited to see this year what it has to hold for us. Well, I know you guys are going to have a better season than, you know, the other team in the state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have a we trash know. can to bang on, but yeah. I, you guys get the idea. 
What are your thoughts about that? Oh, we get this is exclusive yeah, right here yeah. from a player from from a Texas Ranger. What are your thoughts? That's right. What are your thoughts on the Houston Astros? I mean Astros. It's probably the worst thing I've ever heard in my life as a player, knowing that allegedly other players were cheating, but they haven't like they haven't notified it. Teams haven't come out and like said we're sorry. It's just it's kind of one of those things you think like. Why does baseball have to come to that to cheat and get signs? I mean, yes, it's hard enough, and that's the game. It's hard. I think you have to accept it as the way it is. You can't cheat and bang on trash cans and have, like, buzzers in your shirt, and your wife get mad at you because you don't want to get take your shirt off when you have a buzzer in it. I mean, that's a little excessive. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hate on anybody, but it's just it, it sucked to hear because as a baseball person, I've I love baseball, and to hear let, like they got caught cheating, it's it, it sucks. But it's overall they got the punishment. And I mean, maybe some more players should come out and apologize, but I don't think anyone's going to do that anytime soon. It's I mean, it's embarrassing at the same time. I mean, I don't know how you guys would feel if you guys were World Series champs and you got caught like two years, three years later, and now you have to apologize why you cheated and. I mean, it, it sucks because, I mean, it's not easy to apologize or say, like, what's what happened or if it was really, if it was true or you were the, the main culprit that did it. It sucks. It's not the best feeling. Well, we hope you didn't just, like, you know, breach some kind of agreement by talking about that on a podcast. But, <laughs> I mean, who's watching? Yeah, they ain't nobody going to watch this. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it, I, I feel the same way you do. I mean, that was, that April, my dad, my, my father passed away, and he was a huge Astros fan, and I was, and I said in April that they were going to win the World Series, and I always said, you know, he, they had help because he was up there helping them, and then come to find out, <laughs> this right here, it kind of puts a damper, but you know, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, now, I'm glad I did not get that Astros tattoo, because I was going to get one with my dad's name with the star, but I'm glad I didn't do that now, but yeah. still, Dodgers. I called it in April, whether they wanted to cheat later on in the season, you know, whatever, <laughs> but... It is what it is, and it, it, I'm, I'm that must like be why they cheated. They heard you say it's that. Just, and they're like, "We gotta win it for Allen." Yeah, because yeah. we're world. Yeah, fans. it's it's hard. It's hard for them too. I mean, you gotta understand. They got caught, and now they are. Now the whole time they talk to the Astro players, it's going to be any uh, new information on the cheating, and they're not going to answer. And it's it's it kind of sucks because every conversation now they have to think about what they're going to say because if they say the wrong thing the media will get it and blow them up. So it's it's going to be a lot harder this year for them. They're going to be on a lot of news channels. A lot of reporters are going to be in on their their dugouts, their clubhouse. They're going to be interviewing pretty much the whole team. It's going to be a lot harder, and it's going to suck. Like, I don't, I didn't wish this upon them. I wish they never did it, but at the end of the day, they did get caught cheating, and that's not allowed. So it was, it's kind of what they have to deal with. Yeah, very well said. Well, let's go to a different thing. Now, um, as a catcher, we talked to Jeffrey Springs and Tyler Phillips at the Winter Caravan when they came here in Hickory, and everybody's asking, you know, what, what are their thoughts on the electronic strike zone? So coming from a catcher, what do you what is your take on a robot calling your strike zone for you? It takes out the catching aspect of receiving and framing metrics. I'll tell you that, but... Um, it would be, yes, it, if they got it to where it was consistent in the zone and it wasn't missing low, or, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but personally, I mean, I, I don't like how the baseball is changing. I want it to be original and how it is, but yes, people aren't consistent with what they're doing with their jobs, and, I mean, umpires, they're doing their best. I give, I, I, I know umpires have a hard time. People give them a hard time, but they do the they do their best. And it's hard sometimes when you got a bunch of people, teams yelling at you, and it's game last game in the World Series, and you you miss a pitch, and then you do it to the same team that you call the ball and you call it a strike, and they're they're mad at you now. And I get it; it's hard, but at the same time, yes, uh, electrical zone that tells you if it's a strike or not would be nice, but as a catcher, going back to the metrics and stuff, it takes away the receiving. Like, you can't, your framing metrics, your 
how much you can steal a pitch, how like your setup is. You pretty much all you have to do is just sit there and catch and throw and block. That's all you got to do. It, it takes out the it takes out the uh, it takes out the the science of catching of how can I manipulate this ball into looking like a strike and the umpire doesn't notice. That's that's what really catching is about. And I mean, it's it's hard to hear that and maybe they go to it. Who knows? But it's going to be interesting. I hope they don't go to it. Yeah, yeah I, I like the you know, I like the fact that there is a possibility for that human error mm-hmm. yeah it, it yeah the, uh, because who doesn't love watching a pissed off manager go exactly. go crazy on an umpire i know that absolutely it, i love watching fun. earl weaver it's fun yeah <laughs> and listening to him on the radio <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah but, i love i man, love that man, one when uh, he was uh he was shooting up the umpire and he said he was going to be in the hall of fame and he said no you're not earl yes i am no you're not earl yeah <laughs> Have you listened? Have you heard him talking on the radio? Look it up on YouTube. Earl Weaver. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you can, go it's on Coach's YouTube. Coach's Corner. Earl Weaver, Earl Weaver. Coach's Corner. Just, it's the fun. It's like a okay. two-minute clip. It's the funniest thing ever. Don't don't have any okay. of the ch- little children. Yeah, around. it's not safe for work because I mean it's <laughs> Earl Weaver, so you know every other word. <laughs> it's that's this, that's that. I mean that's a lot of what he likes to say. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I, I just. I hate the fact that, that they're trying to take all the human error out of it. I mean, yeah, as a fan, I get frustrated when, when an ump misses a call. But at the same time, I love the fact that that's a possibility and that can change the game or, you know, I just, I don't, I don't think the robot's a good idea. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I, don't I, think it, I think it, it, builds, it builds energy, like it builds for the next game. It's like, oh... Mm-hmm. The umpires, like, they they uh, they um, messed up a call, so they lost the game from tonight. That they got to win tonight or they're not going to be in playoffs contentions. Like, it builds up it people to watch baseball now, and I feel like that, that helps us as players. It makes it even more interesting. It's, well, the umpire missed a call. Now we got to work even harder to get more runs or less less hits or less walks, like just little things. It's, it's yeah. kind of fun and interesting. So, as a catcher, do you ever have any, uh, you know, banter with the umpire or with the batter while they're up there, or is it just, you know, get the sign and catch the pitch and throw it back? Because I got to imagine every now and then you got to say something to somebody. Yeah, I mean, if I know that, I always say hi to the hitters if I know them. Like, they'll tap me on the shin guard, I'll say hello. But if I don't know the umpire, I'll kind of talk to him and ask him where do you have it. But if I know the umpire, like a bunch of them I knew in Hickory and uh, Ben Kinston, I just kind of talked to them throughout the game. They One time, uh, his name was Steven. He missed like a, a ball in the outside corner that I caught, and he called it a ball, and he called it a strike on me for uh, strike three looking. And Rags went up to him and said, you messed up. Like, you called a strike on a catcher that's been working his butt off for you. And he kind of looked at Rags and like kind of like shocked and scared because he felt bad, and Sure enough, he comes up to me that next thing of the case. He he came up to me that next thing of like Sam, I'm so sorry. Like I sh- I didn't know I should do better. Like that's on me. And I was like, no man, it's it's in the past. But hey, like just let me know to do better next time. Like let me know and next pitch outside corner, same pitch. You call it a strike for me. So I mean, there's good ones out there and there's bad ones. The good ones you never remember. The bad ones you always remember. That's always how I I always thought. Yeah, that's how it usually is. You do it right, no one cares. You do it wrong, everyone hates you. Do you ever do that? Yep. That's, Go ahead, sorry. No, no, that's just baseball. That's, that's part of the game. That's that's why everyone loves watching. I mean, players don't really particularly like umpires. Yeah. So do you ever do like uh, Jake Taylor and uh, try to get under the batter's skin? That's right? what I was trying to do. Like, to uh, like, hey, man, how's your wife and my kids doing? <laughs> Yeah. Classic Sandlot lines like, like that. And major, yeah, major like from Sandlot. So, so how, would your sister go out with me? And he yeah. misses and he yells at and he's just like, hey, I'm just trying to have a conversation here. <laughs> no, I, or that, I know, that's and, something that and, uh, I, I've done it with. I've done it with one kid. It was, uh, I think it was Jacob Gonzalez. I remember doing it against Augusta and. He didn't, he didn't pay attention to me, so I was talking to myself, but 
I was just rambling on a bunch of like about about a bunch of crap, and I was just talking and like, hey, what's uh, what is so and so thinking? He hit a pop up, and he looked at me, and I was like, uh oh, he might be mad, and he started running, and you know, I I didn't really I didn't think much of it, but at the time I was, you know, me, I was just trying to get an out to end in. What about the guy in the in the playoff game in Fayetteville that didn't touch home plate? Did you catch that or did Sal catch that? Bragg's actually caught that. I was I was staying I was walking out to Sal and Bragg's was screaming, "Get back and touch the bag! Get back and touch the bag!" And I think Mincy he was the same way. He they're all screaming at me, and I'm looking at him like, "What? What did I do?" And they all looked at me and said, "Sit down. Go behind the plate." And they told the at the time was Steven, the umpire that I'm really good friends with. He looks at me. He's like, "They want to appeal." And I looked at them and I said, "What's what happened?" And he looked at me and said, "The kid didn't touch the plate." And I was like, "Oh." So I sat down there and he uh, caught. Sal stepped off through the ball and I caught the ball. I looked at Steven and I like kind of like slowly touched the bag and he came out and said, "You, you're out." And they everyone just started blowing up like how. Did, you didn't miss the call. You didn't miss the call, and we went back and saw video, and he for sure missed it by a mile. It was funny. It was hilarious. <laughs> but um, you don't know this, but the the game in Kinston, the next the next game, I don't remember the guy's name, but he came out, and um, you know, I wanted an autograph, and I was like, no disrespect. I said, but could you sign it and put no place like home? <laughs> uh, he didn't. I don't think he understood what I was trying to say, but I remember he hit a home run in that game. And he made good. damn sure he touched that plate, and everybody Slowest went crazy. Slowest one. Yeah. He, 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 he walked up. He walked up. Oh, he stopped. At him. Don't forget to touch yeah. the plate. He walked up to the plate. He, he rounded third, slowed down, stopped, put his foot higher than ever, and just <laughs> stomped on it as hard as he could. And the place went wild. But I actually found that was, the other day. Yeah, I was catching. I was catching, and yep. I knew for sure they were going to do it, and he did it. <laughs> I mean, I looked at the dugout and they just shrugged their shoulders, but I didn't care. It was they—they they kind of wanted to do that. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you couldn't really get mad at him. No, because I mean, it's, no, because that's something that like I, I said. It's I even him. I even told him, "Hey, Poppy, way to touch the bag this time," and he started laughing. And I, <laughs> we kind of went on. Nice. So, but yeah, I found that ball the other day. I'm like, who in the world's autograph is this? I couldn't remember. And Jennifer looked at it. It's like, a, that's a Carolina League ball. Isn't that the guy that didn't touch home? And so I go to eBay and I look at him. I'm like, yep, that's him. No matter what he does in the future, somebody's going to be, oh, that's the guy that didn't touch home. Exactly. Yep. That'll be a trivia question one day. For yeah. yeah. Or like, they don't have a graphic. I, like I, ESPN, just guy who didn't touch home. That, that's how crazy it was. I was in, like, the only time I've seen that when I was in Little League, a kid didn't touch home plate. And it's Little League. Yeah. So I'm thinking we're pro- we're professionals here. We can't miss a bag. Sure enough, he's he's celebrating. He's jumping up and down. He jumps over home plate and and just walks off. And Steven's looking at me like with a smirk, and I'm like, "What?" And I kind of cussed at him. I was like, "Cause I was pissed off." And he's like, "He didn't touch home plate." And Rags and them are all screaming at me, and I'm like, "What is going on right now?" Like five things coming at me at once. What's up? And so I was like, "Sit down, sit down." And the batter, the on the guy coming up was like, no, no way, no way. He touched the bag, and so I stepped off, and everyone just put their head, their head and just like their jaw open. Everyone was confused. It was funny. I thought it was hilarious. No, I, I agree. I thought that was that was pretty funny. Um, well, um, I have a question for you. I know it's an interview odd to have a question, right? But uh, um, I see. I can't remember if it was uh, last season when you were with the Crawdads or the season before. But um, mm-hmm. down in uh, Greenville, um, I believe it was your mom, uh, your dad, and uh, I believe your aunt Patty. Yes. Tell me about the curse. Tell me about the aunt oh, Patty curse. The, the, <laughs> the curse of I can't get a hit in front of my aunt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that that curse has been going on since uh, club ball. Actually, I was I was probably I don't know when that when I just decided she gave me a curse for not hitting, but 
I, I just, I looked at her and I didn't want to be mean. So I waited until my parents got in the car and I looked at them and I said, Aunt Patty's not allowed to come to any games. Like, I, I can't get hit when she comes. And they started laughing. They're like, Sam, why are you being so, why are you being so, uh, like, suspicious of her, like, not letting you get hit? And I was like, Mom, Dad, this has happened for about six years now. And every time she comes, I can't hit. So either A, she doesn't come, or B, she comes when I'm not playing, which I'm totally cool with. And so I, I remember it was in Greenville when I was, it was, I hit the home run on the, the top of the roof and then the one yeah. to right center and then the one to left. And she came up to me after the game and she said, no more, she cussed, but she said, no more curse. And I, if you can fill in the blanks, but yeah. I looked at her up, I looked at her, I was like, it's not, it's not broken yet. And she was at the Futures game and when I hit the home run, she looked at me again and, she smiled, and I, I was like, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you're about to say. I want to hear it. She, well, who's your most superstitious laughing. teammate? Or well, is it say you? that again? Who's your most super, uh, superstitious teammate, unless it's you? I I believe it's me because I have, like, a routine. I talk to Chase all the time, and I always put I always like put my socks on a certain way, and I before I go out, I always put cologne on because I want to smell good. And so I remember talking to, like, Steel Walker when he was with Winston-Salem. And he was like, bro, you smell really good. And I'm like, thanks, bro. It's, and he's like, is that the key to hitting home runs? And I looked at him, and I was like, if you want to be, that's just what I do. It's my superstition. And he's like, okay, I respect that. I like that. I like that. And he was like, I might try it now. And I was like, hey, man, it's not for everyone, but if you like it, do it. All right. Well, it uh, looks like you've gotten home. Uh, we know we're, you're a busy guy, so I'm going to say maybe if you guys have one last question, because I have one last question. Uh, do you, you, either of you two have one last question to close with? I, 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 I don't have anything. I'm just going to let these two guys, but Sam, thank you so much for doing this, oh. man. I, I really, you made my day. So, so uh, my last question. appreciate you guys having me on. We'll, we'll let you have the last question. Okay, yeah. Let's Jeremy will go first, and then I'll have the last question, and then we'll uh, we'll let probably you go. make us laugh. Uh, Perfect. Mine's just a. Uh, uh, what are your goals for this upcoming season? Just that was that, so. I just got Jamie Newberg just asked me that, and I mean, it's just. I mean, obviously, I would. I want to repeat what I did last year, but nothing's perfect. But. Um, I just kind of, on a personal level, I I felt like last year I figured myself out as when I worry about today, about what's happening right now, this current time, and just worrying about what I need to do, help me become the player I am right now. And as I keep working, just do that. And that's kind of what I want to do is I want to keep myself present, keep myself in time, what I'm doing. And if I ever go away from it, I always try and refocus myself and say that's a nice, like that's a nice watch or something that's like I'm looking at it that I need to like refocus. Because once I refocus, I feel like I get back into the zone of what I'm trying to do as a player. And especially with hitting and overall playing a hundred and some season on bus rides and stuff, it's hard to focus and. The first year I went to Hickory, I need to focus my. I worried about the future and the past too much. I didn't worry about what was happening right at this present time. And just as that, like what I said, is just understanding what I need to do and keep myself with my eating, keep myself healthy, staying out of the training room, but still being in the training room, doing little things to like keep myself adjusted to not getting hurt or keep myself out of the training room, being nice to doing my everyday routine, sticking to what I know and not trying it once, then totally flipping it and going to a different thing. So it's it's just being consistent. All right. Awesome. It's a great goal. All right. Well, Sam, it's been a very, very great interview. You're obviously a really humble and well-spoken, mm -hmm. talented guy. you got a huge future ahead of you. What I want to know for the last question is, what is the weirdest or most random thing someone has wanted you to autograph? I've autographed somebody's phone once. I, I think it was I think it was Greenville. This college girl came up to me and she had a couple of drinks and I was just kind of signed like autographs for little kids because I like to go for little kids first and 
she looked at me and was like, can you assign something? And I looked at her I was like, do you have anything? And she said, here's my phone. And it was like a brand new iPhone, and I signed the back of it. And I looked at it, I was like, you sure? And she's like, yeah, for sure, thanks. And she walked away, and I, wow. I was like, okay. Well, once you get to the major leagues, you're probably going to be signing foreheads and chests <laughs> and babies and all kinds of things. So you know, get ready to have a different well, answer next time we catch up. <laughs> next time, I will for sure, I will for sure take pictures or try and remember. Just to, I'm going to hold it just for you guys, so don't worry. And the reason why I ask that is because last time that we went to Down East, I ran out of things to have signed. So I had, <laughs> I had Bubba and I had uh, Advocate sign a bottle of Bud Light. It's <laughs> sitting in my room. It's my bubble light, as I called it. And you also got yeah, Curtis Terry yeah. to sign the calculator. And Curtis yeah, Terry, yeah, Curtis Terry signed a calculator because his old music started with "I don't need no calculator, I'm too advanced." But my favorite. <laughs> that, that's funny. My that's favorite funny. is when we got Jameson Fisher to sign the can of Pringles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <the stash. laughs> All right. So thank you, Sam, so yes, much. Thank it's been you great. very much. Thank and, you guys uh, for having me. I'm, I'm happy I got to do this with you guys. All right. We'd love to catch back up with you whenever yes. we can. And, and have a great season. Hey, we'll see you in Nashville. Thank you, guys. Shoot, yeah. shoot me a text. Let me know when you guys want to do something. All right. Thank you All so right. much, Sam. Have thank a good you one, man. very much. All right. Thanks. All right. See you, guys. See, see you. you. I think that was pretty well. All right. That was awesome. That was I hope you guys interview. enjoyed it, too. That, that, was, that made my day. Make sure we're still recording. Yeah. yeah. We were yeah. recording. <laughs> Please tell me we're recording. Yes. Yes, we Thank are. You. Awesome. Six minutes in. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. That was great. It went um, even better than I thought it would. And thank you to Sam. Uh, that was yeah. that was awesome. He's a great guy. If you haven't seen him play, do yourself a favor. Find a way to watch him play. Yeah, and you can follow him on Instagram and Twitter. Or uh, I don't know about Twitter, but I know I Instagram. He's but he's on his Sir Huffington, I think is his uh, yeah, yeah. Instagram. And you can follow us if you want to. Just look us up. You'll find us. Moose Candles. Yeah, Moose Candle Company on Instagram and Facebook. And I'm also uh, Jeremy Le Adam Lell on Facebook and Conrad's Cowbells on Twitter. And don't, Instagram. Don't worry about following me. Just wear red on Friday. Yes. He doesn't need your follows. But I would love desperately them. wants them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. And remember, big news with Red coming up soon. Yes. And buy candles. <laughs>